Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining. This is the Morning Market Review with myself, Russell Shaw, Senior Market Specialist at FXM. My email address is rshaw at fxm.com. Today is Thursday, it's the 3rd of March, 2022. Just going to bring up our high-risk investment warning. Um, I've also pasted the link for tomorrow's uh, live NFP trade. So if you would like to join us for that, um, just go to the... Uh, the link and click on that and register. If you have any um, trouble with that, just email me and I'll uh, email you the link back. Um, but we will be doing a NFP trade um, tomorrow. Uh, hey Zanetta, good morning Anna, and uh, thank you everyone for joining uh, this morning. Um, just bringing up our market commentaries disclaimer. And uh, our references, uh, FXM Market Scope 2.0. Um, I'll read off the CNBC.com morning note. Um, I'm not sure we'll do trading view, but just in case, I want to keep that up on the references. And um, let's just go through the news that we need to know um, for today. And um, it starts with the heading European markets head for mixed open amid Ukraine Russia tensions. Uh, European stocks are expected to open in mixed territory on Thursday as tensions remain high over the Russia-Ukraine crisis. The mixed open for European stocks comes amid heightened fears for Ukraine's future with more reports of explosions in the capital Kyiv overnight. Earlier this week, a huge column of Russian military vehicles was making its way towards the capital, prompting concerns that Russia would soon launch a large-scale attack on the city. Ukraine's second biggest city, Kharkiv, suffered heavy bombardment on Wednesday, while Kherson's mayor said Russian forces have seized control of the key port city in southern Ukraine. If confirmed, it marks a military victory for Russia. Russia's week-long invasion was denounced by the United Nations in a historic vote, and dozens of countries uh, referred Moscow to be probed for potential war crimes. Shares in Asia Pacific uh, were, were largely higher on Thursday after U.S. stocks bounced back on Wednesday, although U.S. stock futures were modestly lower overnight. Oil prices, however, continued to move higher, following a price surge in recent days. In the uh, morning of Asia trading hours, international benchmark Brent crude um, futures surged 3.09% to $116 per barrel, after earlier reaching a high as um, a big button after uh, earlier rising as high as 118 spot 22 per barrel. Uh, US uh, crude futures also climbed 2.43 to $113.29. OPEC and its allies decided Wednesday to hold production steady despite the recent dramatic spikes in oil prices. Earnings come from Merck, Telecom Italia, Prudential, and Aviva. Data releases include the Eurozone unemployment rate and producer prices for January. All right, let's take a look and see um, if there is any sense to be made. Um, and I think that we need to acknowledge that it's a very difficult market to read. Mm. In fact, before we get into the, um, before we even get into the DEX analysis, and we'll look at a few other instruments, I'll bring up Bitcoin, not because we want to do a Bitcoin analysis, which we did um, yesterday, in uh, our crypto minute. Um, I just want to point out, um, so if we go back to, um, let's see, let's put in some verticals here. Uh, let's put in some verticals from here to round about here. Okay, so um, we've got about six months here of an overbought market, uh, which uh, eventually uh, corrected in an extremely uh, vicious way. So uh, there was a 50% correction after this um, overbought condition. We're going back quite some time. And the point is when there is um, an emotional commitment to, to markets, um, 
the uh, oscillators um, can make little sense. And it brings me back to a quote, and I'm not sure if I'm going to quote this 100% correctly, but it was made by uh, uh, John Maynard Keynes, who's the um, effectively was the um, um, uh, who started Keynesian economics. And he, he said the markets can remain um, um, irrational far longer than you can remain solvent. I'm not sure if I've got it 100% correct, but that was the gist of his um, of his quote. So if we go through to the um, the markets at the moment, um, there is a tremendous amount of emotion that is um, um, inherent in the price action. When that emotion evaporates, you know, is a huge question mark. Every every day we're reading um, some um, news headlines that really sort of chill you to the bone. So um, there is cert there's certainly um, a, um, a, a, a a sentiment that is running um, hot at the moment. Um, all right, let's see uh, what we can see here. Um, so Peter makes a comment here. Um, Reading the, this use of uh, dollar sanctions could speed up the decline of fiat currency as other um, as other countries uh, see what happens. Um, let me give that some thought. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. try to respond again. You know, um, it, it's a big a big question mark there. Um, uh, and is asking, is that why I'm staying out at the moment? Um, not necessarily, um, Anna. If there is. If there is some sort of opportunity, I would I would uh, take it. Uh, uh, I think there is uh, an, uh, I think there would be some sort of influence, um, perhaps that I'm not recognising consciously that's keeping me sort of um, on the sidelines. So I'm not sure if that's the um, I'm not sure if that answers. So I'm not consciously staying out, um, but maybe sort of on a subconscious uh, level. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying. Yeah. Uh, Pete, Pete says he's sitting on his hands. Um, so the the decline of fiat currency. I mean, I just don't see that happening. Um, I don't see that happening um, because um, it largely makes um, it will largely make monetary policy uh, um, mute, which is um, impossible to see. If anything, um, uh, Pete, I think it would speed up the regulation of cryptos rather than see the decline of fiat. That, that's kind of where, that, that's the side I'm sitting on. But again, I'm going to end off with uh, subject to uh, subject to correction because it's uh, CBDCs are not cryptos. CBDCs are not cryptos. Um, that may be the case. Um, I'm not sure what a CBDC is, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, if you just explain that to me and I'll, I'll let um, the um, attendees know. Um, take the control from any central bank digital currencies. Oh, oh, yes, those aren't. Central bank digital currencies are not cryptos uh, because they are regulated by the central bank. So Ch China's China's um, digital currency would not uh, be um, um, comparable to Bitcoin. Um, yes, I would agree with that. Um, but I'm not talking about. Uh, I would I would suggest that uh, central bank digital currencies would still be fiat. That, that still be fit. There's no. They backed by a um, a promise, you know. Um, so um, uh, the but the 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 um, whether the um, whether the crypto market is regulated or not. I think for me, 
Um, that is um, a very interesting question. Um, let me, before we get into the um, analysis of the DAX, I promise we'll get into it at the moment. Let me just bring up the, let me just bring up paint here, mappers of paint. So we have discussed this uh, previously, but I think it's worth just um, taking a look at it again. So um, you've got different phases of an, not, not a business, of an industry. Um, okay. Um, so you would have, and again, uh, I'm, look, I'm talking specifically about cryptos here, um, not, not digital dollars, not digital one. Uh, I, I think that's the same as, to, to me, that's exactly the same as fiat. But you would have the, um, you'd have a um, sort of a um, startup phase uh, or embryonic stage. Uh, you'd have here yeah, um, growth stage. Uh, you would have um, after growth something called um, shakeout stage. And then after shakeout, you'd have uh, something called the mature phase. Um, after mature, uh, I'm just going to put this down over here. Uh, you're going to have something called the decline. And uh, let's put this decline in. Um, the x axis is not according to scale. So I don't think we've got a mature. A, a small mature phase. Uh, that's not what I'm trying to. So I just didn't have space there. We probably mature would be a, a, a long, a long phase. But you would kind of have something that goes like this. Um, like that. Like that. Okay. Uh, like this. And then you'd have something kind of like this. I haven't quite got it right, but it would be, yeah, be something like that. Um, and then you've got to think, well, how is this going to apply to, to crypto? So I think uh, cryptos are beyond startup. Okay. Um, I think that, I think they're beyond growth uh, or they were beyond growth uh, prior to the geopolitical escalation. They were at a at shakeout. Um, so that's where I think they were. Um, how long shakeout um, stage lasts, how long does the mature last, and um, you know, is there a decline? What I fear could happen is that there could be regulation, and the regulation cuts the, um, uh, and the regulation comes, uh, this is, where does this model come from? Um, it comes from CFA level one. Um, but I'm not sure who, who devised it. Um, so the uh, so the idea here is we could get some sort of um, we could get some sort of uh, regulation which cuts the mature, cuts the decline. I don't I just don't see um, regulatory authorities gambling with uh, monetary policy. I just don't see it. Uh, cryptos play a huge, uh, uh, place a huge um, burden of risk if uh, you can't control your uh, monetary policy. And the fact now that there is a, um, the fact that there is a almost a uh, um, a, um, a loophole in in sanctions to me uh, seems to suggest, um, well, maybe we've got to tie this loose end up sooner rather than later. So I'm a little nervous around um, the crypto uh, currency, um, the, the lack of regulation, okay, I think um, is, a, um, is a massive debate. Um, does somebody prefer an, an unregulated market to a regulated market? Um, and what are the um, benefits versus the cons there? So um, I think that the idea here is um, we've got a, um, 
a real risk that the shakeout stage gets uh, cut exceptionally short. And I think we there's a real risk of us running down. But that's speculation. It's speculation. Um, so just uh, be aware that this is sort of opinion and um, it's it's not factual. But I think there is a serious discussion to be had around that. Um, but I don't know. I don't know quite who, who, where this model was derived from. It's a, just it's a basic um, in the CFA curriculum, and I, I'm just trying to remember which uh, which part it comes in. It comes from um, it comes from the equity section, I believe. Um, and the reason it comes from the equity selection is because. In that section, it's talking about a top-down analysis. So you start off with the industry, you start off with, there's something called Porter's Five um, Forces. Uh, one of the forces there is, is um, industry um, industry competition. Um, there's another word for it. I'm just, uh, I'm a little blank at the moment. It's, uh, but it's, all, it's rivalry, rivalry within the industry. And um, the question is, well, at which, at which stage, of the game is rivalry going to be the most intense and it's, it's it's around shakeout so you kind of when you do a top-down analysis on a fundamental basis and you're looking at the industry before you're looking at the companies you want to try to figure out which um, stage are in typically your nasdaq companies would be here typically your nasdaq companies would be here that's the growth companies typically your um, s p 500 or your dow jones companies kind of be here so when we so when we're talking about growth companies this is their stage when we're talking about sort of your cyclical value uh, we're talking about mature so um, that's kind of the way this, this model would um, would work um, let me see if I've missed anything um, so central bank digital I think we I think we're heading towards central bank digital currencies that that's not a that's not a deregulated market uh, the question is of course um, Around the uh, the cryptos, yes. Yeah, so I, I would I would certainly agree with that, Anna. Um, Pete says the dollar is controlled by U.S. whims as a reserve, so it would be better if countries moved away from that. I don't see that happening either. Um, I mean, there there may be a case for other reserve currencies, but um, I, I think that's you know that's very much a um, sort of a, a stock standard part of the financial markets. I, I just don't see it um, changing. And I think that uh, these geopolitical crises are, are probably entrenching that, Pete. Um, let's actually take a look at... Um, the DAX versus gold. Um, and I, I'll tell you why this is a, a fairly good idea to take a look at this. Um, it's because it's very difficult to be object in, in my uh, in my case in my case it's very difficult to be objective in a market where you've got this huge downtrend because um, I tend to panic. It, it, that's that's the um, that's the uh, friction or the, or, the, or the tension is a better word. It's the tension between fear in the market and greed and, and fear is the, is the stronger emotion. So when I'm looking at the DAX, um, you know, I, I panic. Uh, we've got a, a lower peak followed by a lower trough. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, good grief, where are we heading uh, with the DAX? And um, the perhaps comparison to gold, which is moving up, uh, hopefully makes it a little bit more objective for us. Um, these charts are, are very similar. Um, and the reason um, that they're similar, um, when I say similar, um, similar in terms of um, lower peak, lower trough for, for, for DAX, where we've got a higher trough, higher peak for gold. So in other words, the correlation here is uh, almost uh, it's almost completely at minus one, right? They're moving in completely opposite directions. If you had a, if you had a, if you had a, a two uh, instrument portfolio of gold and and DAX, you're probably sitting 
pretty close to neutral because any losses you've made on DAX, you've made up for in profits on, on gold. Um, so, and Anna says, uh, when have we hit the bottom to take advantage of the opportunity? And that, that's the question that we're going to try and answer. So I don't know where the, I don't know where the downtrend ends, um, but I don't want to get caught in a panic where uh, we think that we're in a perpetual downtrend. Okay, so in other words, um, if we get any bounce here, is it a is it a dead cat bounce, which is um, the same suckers rally, right? Bear market rally, and do we get caught on the way down? So um, something to note, of course, is that um, gold is. Um, Let's perhaps just take these moving averages out, just so we get a, a better comparison. Um, gold is has actually had an uncertain week, okay? And I think this is very important for us um, for the time being. It can evolve, it can change. But the analysis of gold is that we are uncertain. What I mean by uncertain? is as follows. Um, so I'm just trying to get my arrow here. There we go. We've got a inside period, okay, or, or an inside week until proven otherwise. You can see that gold has a lower high than last week and it's got a higher low than last week. In other words, neither the bulls nor the bears have had the um, the upper hand here to take price to new highs or to new lows. So um, we're kind of in a, a an indecisive market. Not only do we have an inside period, okay, in gold, we've got a spinning top. So um, if we just take a look at this week's candle in isolation, You've got bulls that have tried to take price up. You've got bears that have tried to take price down, but we're kind of near flat for the week in terms of gold. So we've got a, a double um, um, sort of signal of indecisiveness. Um, and the question we've got to ask is why? Okay, the question we've got to ask is why? Why is gold showing signs of indecisiveness? Now, of course, it's not an easy question to answer. Um, the other, um, the other um, aspect to this analysis is that when we look at the, um, the stochastic, the stochastic is making its way into a very bullish area. In other words, this indecisiveness may be temporary before gold continues upwards. Now, let's just talk about gold, and then we're going to make references back to the DAX. If we do get um, the gold stochastic hitting 80, and um, if we get um, uh, it maintaining in that 80 area, then I think we see higher gold prices. And I think that could mean um, that uh, there is a, um, a distinct um, appetite for, for the safe haven. And the reason that there would be an appetite for the safe haven is because geopolitical um, 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 tensions are escalating um, to past a um, you know past previous levels of, of fear. Um, money is rotating; it's going into um, gold just to protect um, value. It's a store of value. It would also suggest to me that we are getting to um, a, a, um, a stagflationary environment, which is um, we've mentioned before. It's a terrible, terrible environment to be in. For policymakers, there's not much you can do. What the way that a stagflationary environment um, ends, the way that it uh, ends um, um, with sort of the least amount of damage is if you do nothing. In other words, there is going to be uh, damage to the economy uh, regardless, but if you try and interfere with it, the damage is going to be um, even more severe. So. Um, but policymakers can't be seen to be doing nothing. 
Um, so they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, so stagflation is a terrible, terrible um, economic um, environment to be in. But we are getting to a point um, where there is a real possibility of that. And the reason for that is because of high input prices, most notably energy, um, oil. Um, we are seeing um, wheat. I'm going to do an article on wheat later. Wheat has gone limit up uh, two days in a row um, and at least three days um, over the last week. But if for the last two days it's gone limit up, what, what does limit up mean? In a futures market, um, you would have a close. You would have a close. And then I'm not sure exactly what the percentage is, but um, you would have a percentage up giving you a, an upper limit and you would have a percentage down giving you a lower limit. And generally what happens in a normal functioning futures market is that a price wouldn't hit the upper limit and it wouldn't hit the lower limit because that would be um, abnormal price movement. What's been happening in the wheat market is we've gone limit up two days in a row. In other words, we've hit the limit because of um, a fear that um, wheat, wheat supply is going to be disrupted. And there's a real possibility of that because um, Ukraine is a quarter of the world's exports of wheat. Um, so the idea here is, um, and what does limit up means? Limit up means, it means trading is halted. You, you can't trade higher than the limit um, up and you can't trade lower than the limits below. In other words, if you want to trade wheat, you're going to have to trade within the, within the bands. We've gone limit up two days in a row, and as I say, at least three times over the last week. And um, the reason for that is real concerns for wheat on the production side, which means inflation, okay? Uh, but the, where's that inflation coming in? That inflation's not because of demand, it's because of supply. Um, energy is a supply side shock. Commodities are raw materials on the supply side. We've seen these increase. Um, that's where that's that's what we call cost push inflation. That's what um, causes stagflation. So there is this huge risk of uh, fertilizers also come from Russia and Ukraine, and that's so. There's um, again um, a huge. Um, um, in other words, what 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 Anna's saying there, by the way, is that well, why can't we just replace the wheat? from Ukraine, so why can't we just replace it, plant it elsewhere? Well, the fertilizers <laughs> come from Russia, Russia and Ukraine, so it, even the, that, that makes it almost um, an impossibility. The, the point is we're heading uh, to a, a possible stagflation environment, but gold is unsure if, if that is the case at the moment. Market participants are still unsure of that. That's why we've got this um, inside period and that's why we've got a spinning top and that's why we quite ha we haven't quite made it to the upper um, the upper quintile so given that um, the um, safe haven has a perhaps an indecisive element to it let's bring that analogy across to DAX okay now let's look at DAX DAX is not quite the same in terms of an inside period uh, what we do have with DAX is a lower high and a lower low. However, we do have a spinning top. Okay, so what we can say about DAX is that the bears have tried to push price down. The bulls have tried to push price up. Uh, neither of them have had much success and we're um, fairly flat from the mark open even though we've got this gap, even though we've got this gap, okay? So there is an element of indecisiveness in the DAX, just as there's an element of indecisiveness in the safe haven. And um, what that seems to suggest to me is that we're at a crossroads, okay? Um, and I think market participants uh, are nervously waiting to see um, which, which path do we take? Do we go down the road of stagflation, and that would be an, an escalation in geopolitics? Or do we uh, somehow find our way to the dipl diplomacy um, route and find that um, things de-escalate? Uh, of course, that is supposition. 
but I think the markets are very much um, looking to see which uh, area plays out. I would think that the, if the stagflationary environment uh, materializes, uh, we do get lower DAX. Okay, we do see a risk off um, element uh, that pervades. Um, we're not quite there yet. Now, if we get the um, DAX moving into, I beg pardon, if we get gold moving into the 80 area and we get DAX moving into the 20 area and holding, that's bad news. That's that's bear market um, uh, technical signals right there. Now, let's just take a look at wheat and let's just take a look at um, um, oil um, as well, just to um, include this in the analysis. So uh, we'll start off with um, oil. I'm going to use Brent oil here as the um, as the proxy, and I'm going to bring wheat on uh, this over here. And yeah, you, yeah, you can see wheat's gone limit up to, uh, two days in a row. If I have to change this to the daily, okay, you, you can see how it's. It looks like it may even go limit up today. Um, all right, so. So the idea here is uh, we're getting this huge um, uh, surge of cost push inflation, huge. Um, so let's now tie this into the Bitcoin chart that we looked into right at the beginning. We are overbought on oil. We are overbought on wheat. Um, on an, any normal sort of given day, we would suggest that um, this is overdone. Unfortunately, the geopolitical um, risk that we're seeing is abnormal. It's not normal. And that means, you know, don't forget what happened to Bitcoin. For six months, Bitcoin remained, just going back to Bitcoin, for six months, Bitcoin remained overbought. But once it started correcting, it corrected hard. It very, corrected very hard. So just based on uh, that, uh, we want to monitor the... Sorry. Uh, I want to bring up oil. We want to monitor this overbought condition. In my in my mind, it's overbought. Uh, it's it's run too hard, too fast. Um, there is um, proper taking at the very least to be made. Um, but the geopolitical escalation, the 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 supply side shocks may just cause market participants to carry on pushing this overbought condition. So we want to watch this uh, very, very carefully. The longer that we stay overbought on both oil uh, in terms of wheat, uh, we can look at corn as well. Um, natural gas is not overbought at the moment, I don't think, but it certainly is. Uh, do I have natural gas? Yeah, I do. It's it's not overbought, but it's it's turned up. Okay, so it's turned up. It's moving up. Um, so we're getting these uh, these huge uh, cost cost push in play, um, pressures. Um, without the overbought conditions actually normalizing, so we, we're in desperate desperate need of a technical uh, correction here. The problem is we're in an abnormal environment, um, and I don't know how long we're going to spend in the, in these um, excesses. But we're desperate to have some sort of um, correction, and gold, the gold market knows that. The gold market knows that. That's why it's that's why it's indecisive. Do do we really need to put all our money into the safe haven? Isn't the market perhaps um, overbought? Shouldn't it co correct? How long is this madness going to continue for? Surely one would uh, think that there has to be peace talks uh, sooner rather than later. But that, okay, is uncertainty. Because what happens if there isn't those peace talks? What happens if this continues? What happens if it escalates past the borders of Ukraine? I mean, these seem like such um, odd questions. Who would have asked these questions just a few months ago, right? The the idea here is the, mark, the, the gold market here is suggesting indecisiveness, uncertainty. That's very much reflected in the, the DAX, which brings us back to Anna's question. When are we going to be able to exploit the dip? And I think the answer to that, um, Anna, is not yet. 
okay um because we are still in this uncertain environment and uh, now we uh, um we are in this it, it just seems to seems to be the theme of 2022 from the beginning of 2022 um it seems that the webinars have been all about uncertainty. The problem with uncertainty is that is the very definition of market risk. A market risk is um, something that we need to be cognizant on of. We have to put out the emphasis more on market risk than on the potential for exploiting any sort of um, price um, anomalies and because the risk um, is too skewed at the moment. Um, so we wanna just keep monitoring this. Uh, we wanna, of course, um, see some sort of de-escalation. I think as soon as there is some sort of de-escalation, uh, there's gonna be a huge bounce, but that's a big F. At the moment, it just seems that the Russians are hell-bent on causing utter destruction, and that is a terrible situation. Um, Anna says she remember it. She remembers the webinars during the pandemic plan. She yeah. So um, let's let's keep um, monitoring this, guys. Um, the takeaway from this is uncertainty. Um, is it a time to exploit the uncertainty? It might be, but I can't, uh, with any sort of um, confidence, tell you. Yeah, it's time to exploit. I, I can't do that. We're still in a very uncertain environment, and I think that uncertainty translates to risk, and we, are, we must acknowledge the high-risk environment, continuing to hope uh, and pray for a for a de-escalation here. Um, all right, guys, uh, if there's any questions, um, go ahead and type those in. Um, all right, nothing coming in. I'm going to uh, conclude at this point, guys. Uh, join me tomorrow, and don't forget we've got the live uh, uh, NFP trade tomorrow. Thanks very much for joining this morning. As always, highly appreciated.